Hey guys, thank you for checking out the channel. My name is G and you're watching Keeping This Tech. And in today's video, I'm doing a quick reaction to the A7R Mark V announcement. It's going to be released sometime before the year is out in stores. I've got my pre-order in, so hopefully that'll go through nice and smooth. But uh, man, I'm very excited for this camera for two reasons. Number one, I actually own the A7R Mark IV for a better part of over two years. In fact, I did a lot of work with that camera. So I know what that camera can deliver in terms of its image quality and the flexibility that 61 megapixels gives you. Uh, the other reason is that while I loved that camera, there were so many little annoyances that bothered me about that camera, but Sony actually addressed every single one of them. In fact, I actually made like a little list of all the things that I wanted to see in the A7R Mark V. I was gonna do a video about it, I never did. I just didn't think there was any interest. So I was like, whatever, I'll just leave that alone. And besides, y'all, I can look at my view count and see that nobody really watches my videos anyway. So but I was like, listen, I'm not gonna worry about this list here. If it happens, then I'll talk about it then. And sure enough, it happened. So. Listen, I'll tell you what those things are that Sony addressed, and then we'll talk about why this camera is, is sick. So the first thing that they did was they gave us that new color science that's found on the newer Sony cameras. So the A7S III, the A7 IV. Bigger than that though, they went ahead and they gave us the different sizes that we can choose from. So 61 megapixels is amazing, right? But you don't always need 61 megapixels. Like when I'm shooting family events or portraits or things like that, or even you know event work, 61 megapixels doesn't make sense. You know, it just doesn't. I mean, it's so much data. And I'm saying, if I'm already paying for 61 megapixels and there's a way for you to downsize those images in camera, why not give us that option? I know that other manufacturers do that. And sure enough, they went ahead and did that. They gave us lossless compressed raw in three sizes, 61, 26, and 15. So that's going to be really, really good. Now, previously on my A7R Mark IV, I'd have to go into crop mode to get 26 megapixels. But again, that's changing my field of view and all the other stuff that goes in with shooting crop. So anyway, they took care of that for me. The only bit of a gripe that I have, and it's true for the A7 IV as well, is that the lossless does not up the frame rate. So it's like capping at like, I think seven frames a second lossless, and it's at uncompressed that you're getting the full 10 frames a second. But you know what? I'll take the different sizes at seven frames a second. That's all right with me. The other thing that they did that I really wanted them to do was to include CF Express Type A bays in the camera for the card slots, and they did just that. Riding to even fast cars like the 256 V90 cards or something like that, they just take so long to clear the buffer. And with the CF Express card, from what I'm seeing in the videos, man, we're gonna have basically limitless buffering with this camera. So that's gonna be great. And by the way, I just realized this, these are in no particular order. <laughs> so just wanna get that clear. But the other one is the faster processor. And of course, now we all know we're getting that Beyond's XR processor that's on the A7S III, the A1, the A7 IV. So that's going to allow for a bunch of things, like all the stuff that I mentioned, obviously. The other thing that I really wanted them to do, and I understand very clearly that the A7R Mark V in our line series of cameras anyway is not they, they're never really video cameras, but I did want to have that separation that you get with the a7 IV, right? And the a7S III, having the settings for video be in video and having the settings for stills be in still and not having them mix with each other. That was a really, really big deal for me with the a7 R Mark IV. I mean, it'd be very rare that I'd use that for video, but in the off chance that I did, every time I'd go back to shoot with it again for stills, it's like, damn, I gotta change everything around. So yeah, that's huge. Now, those are the things that were on my list that got me excited for this camera, but there are a few things that have been revealed that have also like just, just ramped it up for me as well. I'm not gonna go through a whole tech spec dump here. I mean, there's a bunch of videos online about that already, and I'm sure if you're like me, you've already seen those videos, but that obviously the display is just clutch, right? Having the tilt and the flip out at the same time like that is going to be dope. Because when we're talking about stills, I actually prefer the tilt display instead of that flip out one. But now this camera is also very, you know, <laughs> formidable in video as well. So that's going to be uh, clutch to have that flip out display because I do find it useful when I'm doing these videos like this, right? Like having that display is going to be major. The other thing is that it has that viewfinder from the A7S III, which if you've ever, oh my God, that viewfinder is like the world. And I kind of feel like 
it's missed on the A7S III because most people are using monitors, you know, to film video. Uh, and obviously at 12 megapixels, I don't know how much clarity you need if you're taking stills, but on an A7R Mark V with 61 megapixels, that viewfinder is gonna come in clutch. So that's good that they included that. I kind of knew that they were gonna do that, but you know, it's, it was like, it was a given, but I'm glad to see that it actually is confirmed and it's there. I will say this about the A7R Mark V. To me, it's like having four cameras in one. They used to say the A7R Mark IV was like having two cameras because you get full frame 61 megapixels and then you get a crop censored camera, you know, kind of baked in at 26 megapixels. Well, with now the different file sizes, especially at 26 megapixels, lossless compression, it's like you're having a A7 IV there, right, with all the benefits of an A7R Mark V, right, right in there. So that's my third camera. Again, allow me to just enjoy this moment, okay? I know people want to hate on this camera, but I'm hyped for this camera. And then the fourth camera would be that 8K, right? I mean, they're including 8K, even if it's at 24 frames a second, that's still a capability that was not existent on any other Sony camera except for the A1 up until now. So that's like, that's kind of cool. You know what I mean? Having uh, that option as well. So yeah, hype train all day long when it comes to the A7R Mark V. And once you shoot with 61 megapixels and you understand what you can do with that camera, man, Wow, they really did it. They did it. They, they got me all pumped up. So I'll definitely be doing more videos about the A7R Mark V once I get my hands on it. In the meantime, I do release videos about cameras on Tuesdays, so make sure to check that out as well. Till then, guys, I'll check you guys out in the next one. Peace.